Happy Christian Homes, Joyce McMillan, yes. what her what her organization does. Mm -hmm. um, it was really really interesting to see um, the like the kid the kids section the uh, uh, like teenager and then the adult. It's just incredible what they do with, with you know the people there and how you're, you're familiar with them. Are you familiar no, with I it? No, I haven't been okay. there. Um, it, it's basically a home, not a home, a center for people with like physical disabilities yeah. and mental disabilities, and they, they like they'll provide them with work and with uh, like physical therapy and, and therapies to help to help kind of acclimate them, yeah. and it gives them like a a job and. Kind of allows them to become independent, and mm -hmm. it's really interesting to see how they do that and how how they do it like in a Christian way too. Because mm -hmm. they said the people that come there aren't Christian or not are not always Christian, mm -hmm. but they said you know working with them and and helping them just allows them to you know to become independent. And then they ask questions. They wonder why why are people doing this for me? Why mm -hmm. you know why are you caring for me? And then I'll, it opens up doors for them to to. You know, learn about Christianity, yes. learn about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting to see that, and and the way the church works with that, and, and the people, the people in that town is very different than than here in Taipei. Sure. It's a very different it's a small town. Right? Yeah, it's a very different group of people. So it was, it was really interesting to be able to work with people here, and then to have to switch and work with people there, uh -huh. which I, I like. I like those people a lot better. I like uh -huh. I like the countryside a lot better. Yeah. Um, but I so how, how many people are staying in this in the center? In the like the Christian home, Happy Christian yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it's like uh, more than a couple hundred. I think I think they were. A couple hundred. It's a big. Wow. Yeah, it's really nice. And then yes, even like they have things like they have a whole fact a dumpling factory. Yes. And they make the dumplings, and then they ship the dumplings off to their restaurant that they have, and they uh -huh. sell those dumplings, and the proceeds that they make from those dumplings, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, pays the workers yeah, yeah, yeah. benefits, and, and it's not much, but it it allows them to. And they have the bakery. And they have the bakery, and they have like um, like a. Uh, factory like they open cardboard boxes and stuff them with like from Nestle with coffee or yes. they do things like that and wrap them in plastic and it, it's like a big assembly line and it you know the, the, they told me there's not always work and there's not a lot of work and uh -huh. but they make do with what they have so they give little jobs to people and yes. it's just to see like their determination you mm -hmm. know people in wheelchairs who can barely because of the muscular mm -hmm. I can't say the word dystrophy. dystrophy muscular dystrophy and to see them Want to work and want to move things and want to is really it's encouraging today. Yeah. yeah. So and I got to work with a lot of kids, which is what I like most about it. And uh -huh. Got to play with some some kids who had some pretty serious problems. So it was really they, fun. Uh, the uh, church service I'm blessed <laughs> two Sundays ago. In Pentecost. <laughs> was it Pentecost? Yeah. Um, the uh, well, the night before, the uh -huh. pastor took us out with the youth group. All the college, drop out? Of the college kids. Mm -hmm. Are they dropout students? No, no. These were their regular okay. kids. I, oh, I, yeah, they, they, they were college students. They were college, yeah. but, and they know, attended and church. Yeah. They were there for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. And they always come. They, they make a point of staggering their coming back. So mm. there's always kids coming back. Uh, but they all came back because they heard there was an American student. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, but they took it out. And halfway through dinner, <laughs> Uh, pastor sort of leans over to me and says, "No, Richard, about tomorrow, I look at you. Want me to preach? <laughs> Could you? <laughs> sure. So uh -huh. we did. So you did. Yeah, we did. But we did. Uh, but they had right down front. I mean, they just lifted pews up, took them out, and brought in three kids from the center in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, very severely." Uh, disabled, mm -hmm. but they were just part of the gang, mm -hmm. and it was this 99-year-old woman who, I forget if it was her son or some relative, had died. had died recently in the church, had done the, and she was not Christian at the time, and mm -hmm. she's sort of 99, mm -hmm. and she's now coming to church regularly, wow. and um, just, it's that, I mean, the, the spirit of that church is incredible. It really is. And we felt so bad that we had to be there and then <laughs> leave so quickly and Kyle got to see it all. Mm -hmm. But yeah. and, and people know in the town, like, you know, it is such a small population of Christians, but they know they know what the town does for the people, you know, and they, they know that and, and you can tell when, when some of the like when I went with some of the pastors, like the, the people there have a lot of respect for them because they you know, they 
They've been doing great jobs. Yeah, and they, yeah. they see that. And it, again, that starts to starts to spark some interest in other people who, you know, just wonder why. And that's, you know, that's what causes the, the tell, snowball. Tell about the red paint. The red paint story. The one where they, uh, they dumped the red paint on. Yeah, this is early early on in his ministry. And, and there was, the coming out of church. Uh -huh. Opposition. Yeah, and they, and they threw red paint on all the people coming out. But what happened? It started to rain. As soon as they threw it and it washed it off. And it was sort of like, this is sort of like the miracle of the church, you know. And, and you know, uh, Pastor's daughter, that. Pastor's daughter uh, who right. is in college, you know, yeah, was, knows, you know, remembers this and tells us. Oh, there was it? Probably 10, 15 years ago or something. Oh, wow. You know? Wow. And, uh, and they, they, they came and asked him to, um, there was a park there that was a, there was a cemetery. Actually, Sandy knows the story better because, mm -hmm. um, but there was a cemetery and, and, and there was some fear that um, gods were angry or something. And they came to pastor to ask if he would pray to keep the, um, keep the gods happy or something, you know. And he said, no, we, we don't really do that, but we'll pray for you or, you know, that sort of thing. And, and, uh, but, but he was developing some respect in the area mm -hmm. that they would actually come and talk to him. And, mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. But it, it really was a great, great spot. Yeah. Yeah. Robert, what did you do that week? I, well, I just hung out, went to the beach, just did some fun stuff. Just kidding. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sir? So I was also, Ryan ended up coming with me a lot, so we were together a lot. We did ministry in and around Dutch Way. That was our major thing. We also worked two nights with Atlas Kids and work, which I'll go back to tomorrow night for about an hour. And it was just encouraging to see like these people. Um, so it's very similar to what Ryan did. We just like were split with different people, so we worked together. And um, so we just went around, and they've just been meeting with local because they feel that. A lot of times the churches in this area, Dun Shui and Taipei, have a disconnect from um, rich people to poor people, like a lot of the poor people, like the working class, let's say like, well, they might not completely be literate, or they might not feel like they have the right clothes to wear to church, be able to understand stuff, they just feel like that maybe that their education level is not where it could be, or their wealth to go to the church with the richer, wealthier, well-educated people. So what these missionaries that we're working with are trying to do is break down those walls mm -hmm. to the gospel, and, you know? Mm -hmm. So, which is really encouraging, some of these are like missionaries who aren't Taiwanese natives, or they're, but they're learning, to, they're making sure they learn Taiwanese, because that's what the, they, those people speak best, those people feel most comfortable speaking. Yeah. And they're making sure that they, not just like, sit down with these people, share the gospel, ask them if they want to convert to Christianity, then tell them where the church is. They're really taking it at the right pace, and just slowly meeting with these people and yeah. just breaking down walls and yeah. talking about them. And then, so, yes, we did that. You know, we just met with some talented people and we just really tried to connect with them, shared some testimonies, just hung out, shared some laughter and good time, you know. I love the gifts. The gifts. Yeah. Wanna talk about Sister Patty a little? Sister Patty, yes. Uh, Patty, she is um, she's a younger lady. How old may I? I don't know. They just know they know. She's a little yeah, yeah. She's at Pastor Peter's church. She's a missionary. But she is not a missionary through their church, but sometimes they support what she does. Okay. And so she was kind of the one who we were connecting with, which was really good because Pastor Peter, for the first time this week, she, they've been in contact, they've been friends for about a year now, and she goes, she's a big part of their EM ministry, helps of course. This is the first time he's come out and seen what she's done hands-on. So he was making that connection. 
for the first time, which was good for him. Yeah. And kind of see his hands-on experience with somewhere like this versus the people he comes in contact with the DM. Mm -hmm. So that was good. And she, yeah. yeah, so she just has, she's kind of just part of the leading of that passion just to come and just meet with working class people and just help them start what they call simple church, I guess, you know. Yeah. Break down that barrier. Maybe it's the, if they can't read the gospel, just tell it to them or mm -hmm. just share. So. Interesting. So I didn't know they have some connection with country area. Yes. So we were in Taipei, mm -hmm. but a lot of our ministry, I'd say 70% of our ministry was in Dutch way, 75%. Okay. So we came out. We were very familiar with this area. Yeah. <laughs> And you also had Tim Powell with you. Yes, so I was actually surrounded by seminarians. Patty is graduated from seminary. Not necessarily, it was more of like a, I think like a missions track rather than like a pastoral track. Mm -hmm. Peter graduated from seminary. Yeah. And Tim, who was with us, is in seminary from Singapore doing a, an internship till July with okay. Pastor Peter. So he was our tour guide for the week. From Singapore? He's Taiwanese native, left Taiwanese when he was eight because his dad's an ambassador for Taiwan. He lived in Hawaii, he went to school in Michigan, he lived in, I think, somewhere else in the state for some time. Never his whole life. Yeah. So, um, it's a week, though. Yeah. Um, well, it kind of shows his background, so. Yeah. He speaks fluent English, but he feels called back to uh, Taiwan mm -hmm. to do pastoral work. Which he did, he knew he, so he like had a different career, and he knew he got called to ministry, and he didn't ever think Taiwan, and all of a sudden, Taiwan came, mm. and just went out and put on his heart, so. Yeah. He's not planning to stay full time. He, once he graduates, he's planning to come to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And then there so was- So you worship with them at the English missions ministry? Yes, I went to English ministry and then service there. You service, Tim kind of translated for me as best he could, just main ideas. And the English was all the same English. Which was really interesting because there was these visiting Pacific Islanders, all these Christian ambassadors from the Pacific yeah. Islands. Um, so basically it was like, I don't know what you would call it, like the leading Christians in those like islands, I guess, like, I guess important Christians. Mm -hmm. If I don't know, it was, um, they actually, some of them knew Tim's dad, since Tim's dad's an ambassador, and, and one of them spoke. Because mm -hmm. the reason, they're, they're like on this trip, because they're from all these different islands. Yeah. yeah. And um, she calls that EM ministry her home church in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So she spoke, and it was a very it was a good message. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, and then we got to eat lunch with them, so that was really cool. And, and then there was Chu Tian. Chu Tian. Chu Tian. <laughs> with that soup. I heard that you, you with tried soup people out. nuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, what was your impression about her nephew? <laughs> her beloved nephew. Well, first of all, when he told us he was 49, I thought he was lying. He is? I know, but we thought he was much younger. <laughs> like, um, which he was really fun to hang out with. Like we fit in very well. Um, yeah, he, he's kind of humor. Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he showed us um, a lot of temples and a different um, ancestor like houses, or I'm not really sure. Like, the or no, no, the a ancestor shrine, kind of shrine. shrine things. and um, like traditional pocket houses with the uh, moon shaped water yes. that has. The, the fish in it, and it also cools that area, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Um, however, I, I still wonder if, I should ask this question, if more mosquitoes are in that area because of the water, but... The fish take care of the water, uh, <laughs> yeah. okay. mm -hmm. but, um, And then you showed us that, like, the oldest, I uh, guess, oldest to youngest yeah. around the houses, uh -huh. and then in the middle is the ancestor uh -huh. area. Yeah, yeah. Did you try Hakka food? We? Oh, okay. Bamboo rice, was that technically Hakka? Bamboo. 
It was there's rice and like a bamboo log. That was at the app original. Yeah, no, that was at the app original. Oh, that was app original, not hot. Yeah. Yeah. In the bamboo. In the yeah. That stick. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the original. Yeah. Uh, but we went to that that cultural center, the Aboriginal cultural center. Yes. Where is it? It's up in the mountain someplace. In Pindu or in Kaohsiung? 